Good morning, it's Wake Up to Business, your Get the Business Day Started program. We've got the business news for you this morning, plus you're busy, but do you really need a virtual PA? If you're trying to mix running a business and a family, then you know how tough it can be. Can we get some advice from a children's entertainer? And traders, well, sometimes they don't always have the best image. Can we change that for you to make sure that things go really well for you in your business? If you are in a rush, then you'll get all that in the first 10 minutes of this program. If you're stuck on a train or in a car, stay with us a few minutes more for part two, as we've got an idea which could save you a fortune on mobile phone calls. Plus, we'll look at some of the features coming up on Wake Up To Business, which should help you enjoy your business lifestyle even more too. We've got discussion on business strategy, and I'll have a social media tip for you too. It's all uh, packed in this show, so grab a coffee or plug in your headphones as we get you set up for the business day. Wake Up To Business is your Get The Business Day Started program, coming from the country's top business shows, expos and networking events. Join us as we discuss today's business news, strategy and gain some tips from our panellists that might help you in your business today. Good morning. Whether you head a large or small company or a medium-sized company, welcome. We live in the world's sixth biggest economy. And just like everyday business people are gathering around the country for networking events, expos and shows, discussing ideas and getting ready for the business day ahead. If you're currently listening while stuck on that train or in that traffic jam on your way to the office or a meeting, then you're missing out on events like this behind me. Today we are at Twickenham Business Biscotti at the Marriott Hotel in a truly amazing venue here at the home of English rugby. You can't see it behind us. Hopefully you saw some of the images at the start of the programme inside Twickenham Stadium in Middlesex for this event, which is in such a vibrant area for business in the west of London as well. As always, the organisers have put forward three fascinating guests, and I can tell you they really are varied today, uh, to show off the kind of conversations that are going on at this event. And don't forget, if you want to talk to any of them afterwards, just come to Twickenham Business Biscotti next time. Or, of course, you can check out the website for their details too. We've got Ruth, who is a virtual PA. And um, you've also just taken on a major new client that you can't really tell us too much about nope. because of the confidentiality involved in your business. But we'll find out a lot about that uh, too. Jeff, who is a children's entertainer, although you deal with a whole load of other businesses, but you, um, you just did a one-man show in front of 500 people? Yes. Yes, that was in Egham. Oh, quite impressive that, doing a one-man show, and you kept all these people's attention for that whole time. You've got to really focus on that. It was Magna Carta Day, uh, um, running by the Egham Chamber of Commerce in Egham High Street. Brent, oh, no, tell us about that a little bit more uh, later on. And Jay, you're a gas engineer, but you've... Um, well, you've uh, done really quite well in expanding your business recently. You've, yeah. you've only started recently, but you've, you've really business. got in with estate agents, haven't you, as well? Yeah, new estate agents, um, contacts come in all the time, so yeah. yeah, it's going really well. And I really want to ask you about this whole thing about traders with a bad image, because okay. I know you're trying to change all that. Trying so, to change all that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm Richard Midson. I'm a chap who's uh, had quite a bit of success on YouTube in the past. But anyway, that's about me. Right, so what's going on in the business world today uh, that could be relevant to you? Let's start off with a bit of news. If you've ever had to fight HMRC, then there's some good news for you. Uh, there's been nothing short of a damning report for Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, which shows that 90% of the complaints HMRC rejected themselves were actually valid, according to several newspapers, when people went to the independent adjudicator. More than 2,000 of the 2,300 complaints were upheld. The independent tax watchdog highlighted the impact that months of fighting had on people and the cost involved in doing that too. If you've had an experience with something like that, we'd love to hear about it. Now, if you operate diesel vans or cars in London, then you've probably already heard that London's mayor wants to increase the congestion charge for you by £10 per vehicle. It seems councils are getting in on that act too, with Islington Council now hoping to introduce £20 fines for diesel vehicles left idling even at traffic lights. They even suggest operators should switch off their vehicles at traffic lights. Jay, this, this has got to relate to you. You're travelling around London the whole time. Yep. What do you think about it? Well, I think if it comes in, it's going to impact massively on you know our customers. So that has to be factored into that, to that price of that job. Um, and it's going to be a change of habit if they're talking about turning the engines off and stop idling. What, what gets me is what happens if you can't restart your No, that's it. So you're stuck in, stuck in the middle of London. Yeah. Um, and the congestion charge, you know, if it goes up, then yet again, this is going to impact. And you're going to have to put that on the price. Yeah, exactly. So, not good news. 
Is it time to move into luxury goods? A fascinating article from entrepreneur.com saying that luxury brand sales are growing fast. Indeed, only a couple of weeks ago, a new event called the Elite London was launched at Biggin Hill Airport, just south of London, aimed specifically at buyers of luxury boats, cars and planes. The report says a part of the reason is a change in demographics, with old money dying out and new money, especially from the Far East, keen to spend their cash in the West. The report also says around 20% of luxury goods customers say they are influenced by social media, which good news for me and my, and my business. Finally, proof that a novel association or unique selling point for a venue for hire can go a long way. According to eventmagazine.co.uk, the Rugby Football Union and Compass Group's joint venture right here at the Twickenham Stadium. The Twickenham experience, in fact, has seen year on year conference and event sales rise by 8%. Says that things such as the Hacker team building experience, this is where the New Zealand rugby team, I saw a smile go on Jeff's face there, do this traditional Maori challenge, have helped boost those figures for them. Maybe we should all try it out at the end of the show. Do you fancy doing that? No, I can see your face. <laughs> Not a chance. If you've spotted a new story, then uh, do let us know on the forum at wakeuptobusiness.com. So the first question today then is this. You're busy, but do you really need a virtual PA? How does it work? How much does it cost compared to how much it's actually worth? How do you justify having a virtual PA in your life? Ruth, this is very much a question for you. Expensive? make it work. Um, it depends on how much work you have to get done. Yeah. Your budget. A, VA, a good VA should work with you in your budget. You probably can't have everything. But it's about your peace of mind. How much is your peace of mind worth? So what do you actually do? Because you're not just a business PA, you're a lifestyle PA, aren't you? So this is for people, if they're very busy with business, they need stuff done, yeah? Um, I generally help people like small businesses, one-man bands, housewives, bachelors, who need someone behind the scenes to organize their paperwork, organize their life, organize anything that would make their life go smoother while they get on with the things that they actually want to do. So um, if you're a small business, like for instance, or a one-man band, mm. you have got to go off and do your craft, which is plumbing yeah. or electrical work or whatever it is that you do, but and you're busy doing it all day long. You haven't got time to be dealing with the paperwork of that sort of business generates. If we just go to like cash flow, for your cash flow, you would need to send some invoices out. Yeah. And if you haven't got time to send your invoices out, you're not getting paid. The money isn't coming. Yeah. Whether no matter how good you are at plumbing, your business will stop. But why no would they plumbing. employ someone like you instead of taking on a member of staff? If you take on a member of staff, and there's nothing wrong with that if you can afford it, mm. you have to find uh, a place for them to work, expensive equipment, you have to pay them an annual salary or a weekly salary, you have to deal with their taxes. If they go So you're sick, on demand, basically. I'm on, exactly. Right. I'm on demand. You don't take care. I take care yeah. of my taxes. You just ask me to yeah. do something, I do it, and that's it. Right. You don't have to talk to me again or pay me again until such time. But it's, it's not just you. your business life. So we're talking about personal life as well and things like that. Yes. So we talk Talking, such as I, I don't have a family, okay. so I'm a bad example. Okay. Here. One of my main clients, I help them. Like their boat needs maintaining, I call the maintenance. Sorry, person if they want me. Boat. Their boat needs maintaining. Exactly. Yeah. I don't have maintain boat, the boat. Not yet. Jeff, maybe one you day. Have We're aiming for it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Exactly. I would call the maintenance person and say, "Can you lift the boat out? Can you fix the pump yeah. on it? Blah blah blah." I make sure that once it's done, yeah. they get paid. Right. It could be organizing their diaries, making appointments with the doctor. Just going to the, I go to their office, they go to their house once a week and I deal with all the things that can't leave the house, are really confidential. So, so looking at it from a sort of, putting money into it for the return you're going to get, let's say, I mean with Jay, what, what's, what sort of hourly rate would you say your time is worth? This is always a hard thing. But My I mean, hourly rate? Yeah, I mean, yeah, how much is time worth to you? Time, well, it's really important. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm finding already that I've finished work for the day, come home and I'm yeah. dealing with my own invoices because I've not got someone... Like Ruth helped me out. Yeah. So yeah. But but if your time is worth, let's say, 50, 50 quid an hour, so if you're saving them that amount of time, then you can work out the value of what that's that's giving Precisely. to them. Precisely. Yeah? But it's not just about the money. Yeah. There's the element of the fact that when he comes home from work, he is tired. Yeah. And he has to start looking at invoices, sending emails out. He may not even have the professional words to put in the email, and yeah. certainly not at eight o'clock at night. If you just called me in the daytime and said, Ruth, can you send a letter? Can you send an email to someone saying so, 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 so? 
I'll make sure that that is gone within the hour. He comes home with a peace of mind knowing that that particular oh, task has been done. <laughs> it does make life sound a lot easier yeah, having someone like this. We need to talk. <laughs> I think we all need to talk, actually. I was going to say, this is one of the things about coming along to events like Twicken and Business Biscotti today. Um, as I say, I think, I think Jay and I need to have a chat with you. Um, and let me just say about Twicken and Business Biscotti, uh, the organisers are absolutely busy at the moment, so I'm just going to say very quickly, check on the website businessbiscotti.co.uk, have a look for the Twickenham event. It's the second Friday of every month, this particular event, so come along to it. It's a, it is the summer, so it's a little bit quiet at the moment, but this is one of the biggest groups in the country, so it is normally pretty packed. Okay, coming up, if you're trying to mix running a business and a family, then you know how tough it can be. Can we get some advice from a children's entertainer? And uh, also, Ruth, we're going to talk to you a little bit later on as well, aren't we? Too. Um, also, don't forget, um, if you know a business expo meeting or business gathering which you think should be featured on Wake Up to Business TV, then let us know. Just go to wakeuptobusiness.com and click on the contact and send us a message section. There's a ton of promotional benefits to having us film an event. So get in touch with us today for that. Jeff, you're trying to, you've got someone busy. We've already talked to Ruth. We know there are busy people out there. One of the hardest things for people who are running particularly large companies is trying to get that work-life balance right. You work in a couple of different businesses. One of them is as a children's entertainer. Yes. But you also do, you know, full adult level business as well. Yes. How can people, if they're in that really busy job, get that balance right and relate to their kids? How do you do it when you're moving between those businesses? Well, when I'm dressed up as Mr. McDonough the magician, my kids won't have anything to do with me. <laughs> and uh, they I never. Thought there were men like you when that happens. <laughs> and uh, they say, "Don't come and pick me up from school if you're dressed like that." Um, so uh, it can be uh, it can be fun as well, even at home. But how how do you go through that mental attitude though? You're going from, as I say, that sort of very um, entertainer to that business person. How do you approach the children? You have to just switch off from one and switch on to the other. So when you're when you're one persona, you have to be that person. Mm. And, but if, uh, if you're sitting in an office all day long, and you're managing teams of people in some big you know a big company, and then you're coming home to your children at the end of the day. What sort of tips can you give us in terms of how to entertain them? You, you're an expert at this stuff. You, you know this. Um, uh, well, I think my kids are at an age now where they don't want to be entertained by me. So, uh, are they teenagers now? Yes, they're locked away in their bedrooms. What about when they're a bit younger, and, though? Um, again, you just have to go um, do what you can and, uh, and um, deal with it every event as it turns up. Mm. So. But, I mean, some of the things that you do in your, in your business, you're, you're doing magic and stuff like that, aren't you? Um, and, yes. and you told me a while ago how you picked this up and it was just, just all happened, didn't it? So anyone yeah. can do this stuff. Well, when the kids were young, I was testing new tricks on the kids and uh, seeing how they reacted to it. And um, it's not just about doing the tricks, it's the reaction and um, and it's, it's um, the whole business about um, creating an atmosphere around that um, trick. So, right. Um, it's uh, the presentation, not just the trick, right. um, that counts. So it's all about paying that attention to the children, to what's going on at that time? Yes. I mean, you, you t I was saying earlier that you, you did a one-man show in front of 500 people. Yes, that's right. Keeping the attention of 500 people is quite a big task, isn't it? Yes, it is. And um, again, a, it's all down to preparation, um, but you have to be on the ball and be able to change it at a moment's notice and, uh, and adjust to the audience. If you can see they're, um, they're glazing over and losing attention, you've got to be able to get them back. So if you're, you're sitting at home with some uh, attention-seeking kids, um, any simple tricks you can tell us? No, not <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> Just threaten them. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, if you want to be a children's entertainer, just just threaten them. Any any simple thing you can tell us. Oh, um, one of the one of the lines I use that if you don't be quiet, I'm going to get all the girls to kiss you. That usually works very well. Now, when we were kids, I think that was that. Well, that, was <laughs> that, that would have kept us quiet, or actually probably made us, made us made us really noisy. You have to do better than that. <laughs> You have to have some girls there to start with. Though. <laughs> um, Jeff, you're a regular at Twickenham Biscotti? I am a regular at Twickenham Biscotti, yeah. I found the Biscotti events very useful for um, picking up work. 
Fantastic. And it's Mr. McDonut as well, isn't it? Just very quickly, give us a website, although it is on screen. Mr. McDonut the Magician. And it's uh, www.mrmcdonut, uh, M-R-M-C-D-O-N-U-T dot co dot UK. All those websites, as I say, are going to be on the screen, so don't worry. Um, right, we're very nearly done with part one of the show, although I'm really looking forward to uh, this next topic as well. So, applies to uh, a lot of people. Traders don't always have a good image, charging more than perhaps you hoped they would uh, charge and taking too long. But there's one company who are trying to sort that all out and we're going to speak to them in just a few seconds time. Don't forget also, you can, if you have got to go in the next few moments, you can listen in later on iTunes, on the train or in the car, or on your way home by just going to wakeupthebusiness.com and select listen item in the menu. If you've got a few more minutes, then all my guests are going to be going deep into a business strategy question. Plus, we'll also be talking about some of the features which will be coming up on Wake Up to Business soon. But before all that, traders. Right, traders, they don't always have the best image, do they? They've no. got this. Yeah, I mean, look at Ruth here. Um, Jay, you have recently set up this new company but yep. it is expanding fast just tell us very quickly what you do first of all so we do um, gas heating and plumbing uh, maintenance service installations all that sort of stuff really right um, and you're doing this a lot of this is coming up with um, estate agents as well estate agents you yeah you know check a tray that sort of stuff as well yeah uh, word of mouth is obviously the best sort of advertising we can get yeah um, so yeah well, what about this image okay the traders I mean, I, I had a situation outside my office the other day where it was bright sunshine, there was scaffolding that was blocking out the sunlight, uh, the work was done, the work was done, and it took a week for the scaffolders to come and take the damn thing away. Yeah. Minor issue, but it was still annoying. Yeah. Why are traders often so slack? I'm going to use that word because a lot of them can be. Well, for that sort of trade, I'm not too sure, but I know in what I do, a lot of people will go in and try and maximise the money on that job when it could have been a simple fix could have been a half an hour job turned into a three hour job yeah so a lot of people go in there not thinking about the customer but thinking about their pocket basically and i think that's why a lot of people are now very wary when it comes to getting traders into the house so we've got this balance here we've obviously you've got to make money so there's no point going in there and just sort of charging a tiny amount customers will be happy but you'll be out of business so you've got to find that balance. How are you approaching that then well, to make sure that you're do, delivering a credible service? What we do is we go in there completely transparent and honest. If yeah. it's a small job, it takes us 10 minutes. We'll just charge you the minimum um, rate for that job. Yeah. Um, if it does need a lot of extra work or parts, we would advise you what needs doing. If there's any, any cheaper alternatives, we will offer that as well. Right. So we want to be completely honest. If that means us not making the most on that particular job, yeah. we want to leave that house so that you would recommend us. So smaller amount of profit per job, but hopefully more volume of work. Because I think this is a big mistake that the traders do make. Is As we know, it's referral business, which is probably far more effective than advertising. Anything, any it's, it's events like this that yeah. do it, and it's getting people to see what we actually do. Word of mouth. And it, these people burn their own bridges when they yeah. go and overcharge. And if, I, if I could say something here, as a, a virtual PA, one of my tasks usually is to source tradespeople into yeah. my clients. And I often have to look for at least three or four people who do the same, like three or four plumbers or something, and ask them to come in, visit the house, quote me, and, and so forth. And I'm the one, I'm the gatekeeper, so to speak, for my clients. And if I have a, a, a plumber who doesn't do it in the way I'd like them to do it, they're overcharging me or whatever, I have loads of people to choose from. But guess what? I go to these events, I find people at these events, so I don't have to go to the internet. I yeah. just have people that I can pick up from these businesses. The problem is, if you come to me from this business and I recommend you to a client, I look bad if it all goes yeah. wrong. Yeah. And I certainly will not be recommending you. And I will tell the other network members my experience with you. So it, it really doesn't pay and they don't ever seem to understand that you know if someone says something positive about you they'll tell them one person something bad about you they'll tell they'll complain all day and next week and yeah. they'll remember and they'll put it because of the way the internet works and we'll put it on the website yeah. we will review you so really you need to be thinking about it yeah oh, it's good that you're approaching it in that way it's a professional serious and get away from that cowboy trader exactly. it's just too much of an out there 
Um, right, so coming up, we're going to be talking about some of the features which will be coming up on Wake Up The Business soon. We've also got a resource for you, an idea which could save you a fortune on mobile phone calls. And we'll also be discussing business strategy in more depth. So it's part two now. It's a bit of a chance to discuss things in a bit more depth, a bit more relaxed over the next few minutes. So if you're stuck on the train or in that traffic jam or in that car, then uh, take a deep breath and make everyone else around you wonder why you're looking so smug. Maybe. Anyway, uh, we are at Twickenham Business Biscotti at the Marriott Hotel in a truly amazing venue here at the home of English Rugby right inside Twickenham Stadium here in Middlesex. And uh, what a great event it is here today. It is a little bit quieter because it's a summer. But as I say, uh, this is one of the biggest groups in the country um, during the main part of the year when it gets absolutely packed out. So we'll certainly come back for that if we get invited to come along. Before we get into the serious stuff of part two, though, a question for you. Where is the oddest place you've ever got a sales lead? Uh, for me, it was in a hot tub at a place called Ardencott Manor um, near Warwick. There was snow all around. I was in the hot tub. It was nice and really cosy, and there was this one other chap in there, and we were doing the classic British thing of not looking at each other. And finally we started talking, found out that he was from a building services for, uh, firm, and we started talking about how we could work together. So, come on, where, where's your, where's the oddest place you've ever got to sell Go on, Ruth. Come on, be honest, go on, just the be honest. The South American jungle. The South American jungle, love it. Um, I'm also a travel journalist, so I yeah. spent a lot of time doing that in the past. And I was writing for Rough Guides and touring the three Guyanas and meeting a lot of different people. And from that, I got leads to write for a few of the domestic airlines. So, oh, I, can't, I can't beat that. Uh, jungle well, not, of Guyana? Not quite as exotic as that. No. Um, hot tubs? No, not hot tubs either. Where was walking, that? Walking my dog yeah. and I dropped my phone. Yeah. Um, the guy that found my phone contacted me and it took the, the following day his boiler broke down <laughs> so it, it, I, I swear I didn't set him up that was as it was that's got to be the best sales pitch ever hasn't it so literally my so dog my dog got how do we do it get out a phone get drop, a, it, drop it on the, yeah. get someone to answer it we think he's a potential client yeah and then the next day the boiler breaks down <laughs> go on oh, well, uh, mine was actually walking a dog and uh, meeting a family who patted the dog and um, you know just talking to them just got talking to them and uh it went, and, uh, so the secret is dogs. Yeah. That's it. So I need to get a dog. Yeah, I yeah. need to get a dog as well. It's where we're going wrong, right? Yeah. Um, I don't have a dog. I borrow the neighbours. <laughs> There's the secret. We'll have to find a neighbour that. Right, back to the serious stuff. And in a moment, I'll be putting the business strategy question to our panel. How did you get your first client? But first, Jay, um, question for you. You're operating in a pretty busy, saturated market. Yeah. Okay. There are a lot of gas fitters out there. This applies to a lot of different businesses. How do you stand out? Just try and be a little bit different. Like I say, try and be in regular contact with our customers, um, giving courtesy calls like the following week, um, just to make sure everything's still okay. Um, and but isn't isn't that, you know, you're talking about you're working with estate agents. Isn't that something that every other firm is doing? As far as I know, not. I mean, what will happen is the agent will give us the details of the tenant, we will then contact and liaise with them direct. So the agent gives us the work and then we deal with the tenant. Um, so once the job's completed, I will still have the tenant's phone number and we'll be contacting them regularly to make sure that everything's still okay. So you're providing an extra bit of service? Yeah. But if, if, Ruth, Jeff, if you were going to take on someone to do your gas stuff, I mean, even in your own home, what would you look for? And I'm not saying this for Jay's benefit because he's sitting here, but honestly, what would you be looking for? I mean, with me, it's referrals, it is recommendations, no question. I'm not going to just pick anyone at random. It would be recommendations uh, with a track record. Absolutely. I do that for my clients as well. So yeah, you're saying. So. My own personal use. It is so important because you'd like, you have someone to go back to if it all goes wrong. You mm. recommended what sets and this happened. Mm. How do I deal with this? Mm. Um, it, it, stopped me, it stops me going on the internet all the time and just picking up names of people I've never heard of, I've never done business with, and having to go through all the reviews on them, mm. which is also not a bad thing to do. Mm. But I start with the referral source and the recommendations. Then if yeah, that doesn't that work, face it's a face. personal so, feel. So at the end of the day, this is why you're here. Yeah. You're Absolutely. getting your face known, you're saying, look, this is me, this is what yeah, I represent, exactly. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and what can you do beyond networking? Is there much more you can do? I just think continue off that level of service that other companies hopefully don't. Yeah.
But in terms of, you've got networking as one avenue for doing that. Are there any other avenues you're exploring in terms of marketing yourself in that way to get really known I mean, as a face? You've got other, like, check a trade and which trader on the internet. Mm. Um, but like I say, it's more about getting into the people's homes, doing a good job, and then getting that referral. Yeah. That's the best. That's it's referrals way. very much so. I think. Well, yes, for me, it's even more than that because to have a virtual PA in your life whether it's a business life or your home life or even more so on the home life there's a lot of confidentiality that person has to trust you Yeah. and people with money whether it's five pounds might not be a lot to you but it's a lot to someone else Yeah. whatever the amount of money they've got they want to protect it yeah. and to, for you to be their virtual PA or to help them in any way they have to trust you with a lot yeah. of personal stuff and a lot well, of high things, level well, they're stuff asking, they're asking they're putting their trust in your trust, aren't they? You're exactly. actually taking on enormous responsibility. Precisely. You so you've got to make sure that you get someone that you can trust like Jay exactly. to I actually have, come and do this. Exactly. I have access for some people to yeah. passwords. Not every password. Certain passwords, certain bank accounts. Yeah. Lots of intimate knowledge about them. They have to trust you with yeah. that. And then they say to you, yeah. can you find someone that you trust to come into my house, which yeah. is my palace or my temple, to do this? So there's a lot of trust going on, and it affects everyone when something goes wrong. I love this word temple and palace. Well, that's yes. definitely my house. Yes, that's how people consider their property. And if yeah. you're helping them to protect it, to, to fix it or whatever, they need, right. they need to trust you. Jeff, let's move on to you. Um, this whole issue of working with children. Obviously, there's an enormous amount of security involved in it, uh, insurance, responsibility, and all that kind of thing. In that area... How much have you had to learn about how to do that? And what, what are the key things that you've done? Um, well, I've been on courses and workshops to, um, to learn um, how to deal with it. I'm also um, 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 credited with the, to be able to work with children. Um, what are the key things that you learn on these things? Though? But the other thing is that I'm never left alone with children yes. either. And uh, I always make sure that... I'm never left alone with children because I'm there to entertain them, not to babysit them. Yeah. And so there's occasionally you get asked to do a dinner party where all the parents are eating and you'll be entertaining the children in another room. And at that stage I would say to them, well, I'm happy to come along and do that, but there does need to be an adult there present as well. Because, so, you know, we have got to be so careful these days. We, you, know, you can't ignore the fact there's all these stories out there and yet kids still need entertaining and they yeah. want to be entertained. Yes. They're completely innocent of all this stuff that we're hearing about in, in quotes in the adult news. Yes. So got to make sure it's safe and it, it you know there's all that protection in place there's, there's loads of rules and regulations for all that there aren't any rules and regulations uh, for private parties however really? you have to set your own mm. rules and regulations but by doing that you're sure. standing out if, if there aren't any rules and you're setting some you're actually saying look i am safe and i've got all this accreditation yes. that's good yeah um, that's right and uh I'm also a member of Equity, which gives me public liability insurance um, to cover any eventuality. And, uh, That's fascinating. I can't believe that there's no actual sort of rules about private parties or um, entertainers coming in. So, lots more stuff still to come up, but first of all, let's ask the uh, panel here at Trigonum Business Biscotti about a, a business strategy question, and it's this one which a lot of you, if you're just starting off in business, uh, will be wondering about is how to get your first ever client. The best way to explain this is to ask, how did our panel get their first ever client? Let's ask you, Jeff. Um, it was my sister's son, and uh, it was the first client that I did a party for. And, uh, so did family. The entertainment. Yes. Yeah, it's a good place family. to start. Yeah. Ruth? Yeah. People, family and people you've worked with. My first client is actually... Um, I used to work for him as his business PA, so again, the trust and confidentiality came in. When I said I was setting up my virtual PA business, uh, he just said, well, look, my wife needs a lot of help. Can you help her? So I got to know her, and now I deal with their house and stuff. Yeah. And what about you, Joe? Much the same, just friends and family, really. Um, I used to work for British Gas before, and then people knew I was going to start my own thing. So just people that you know, yeah, friends and family. 
Okay, so now in this section of the show, normally when we get fully underway in September, we'll be trying to find some things that you can do or enjoy with your business lifestyle. It might be uh, the right car to turn up to in a business meeting. It might be how to spend some of your hard-earned cash on property investment. Or it could be looking for ways to just enjoy your business life more. In fact, I've actually already been talking to an air taxi company who fly business people around the country. And they say it's not just for people who run corporations. We'll see. But if you have a great idea, for a lifestyle subject, then do let us know via the forum at wakeuptobusiness.com. Um, by the way, also, if you want to invite us to come along and film at your event, it's very easy. Just go to wakeuptobusiness.com website and click on the link to events and then how to invite us. There's everything you need to know there about how to use this show to promote what you're doing. And we're not limited to where we go in the UK as well. So if you have an event anywhere, then do let us know all about it. In a second then, an idea which could save you a fortune on mobile phone calls. Uh, just looking at other events which are going on as well, don't forget there are a whole series of awards uh, going on. Uh, while it's probably a bit early to enter this show, I'm certainly planning on heading to the Surrey Federation of Small Business Meet the Judges event soon. You can find more details on that on surreyawards.co.uk. If you know of any awards processes also anywhere else in the country, do tell us and we'll give them a mention on the show too. And of course, if you'd like us to come and film a show, at that event get in contact via the website as I just said. I mentioned earlier that we would have a resource uh, for you. Uh, it's called Vibra. It's a mobile phone app. I was going to try and get my phone out but it's an app uh, for your smartphone that's especially useful if you travel outside the UK regularly. Providing you can find some Wi-Fi you can speak to people for as long as you like to anyone anywhere in the world. Now you might say yes but there's things like Skype. But Skype needs a username. You have to share yours and get other people to enter theirs. This simply works off your phone number. So the moment you install the app in it, it tells you who else has got the app on their phone and you're ready to go instantly. It's not perfect, but it's so easy to use that I've been using it a lot. Um, Ruth, let's have a, a final look at another issue for you. Um, getting the right people for your business. You talked about a referral, but you can't really just go to somewhere around here, uh, Richmond Hill or some of the really wealthy areas and just knock on doors, can you? No. So how in you, in this sort of high-end market, can you get customers beyond those, those just immediate referrals? Um, quite a lot of it is simply word of mouth. Again, right. we go back to this trust thing. People are not going to, you don't tend to do business on your doorstep. So whatever I am selling, I can't come and knock on your door and say, buy this from me. If, I have, if my client goes and talks with his friends, his friends may say, look, I've got all this paperwork that I need doing, I'm so stressed, which is usually what it is. How, I just don't have enough hours in the day, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to cope, my wife, everything. Um, they say, you know what, well, my PA or I know someone who does this for me, they are trustworthy, they're reasonably priced, they do a good job, and I would always go to them if I knew they, that is how it works. So how do you encourage that referral? This is something actually that applies to all of us again. Is that you can go and do a good job and someone might think, oh, they did a great job and forget about you. So I how can you... Well, no, obviously, they yeah. never forget about you. <laughs> and certainly not with Mr. McDonough as well, definitely. But how can we get, and this applies to all of us here, how can we get people to refer us? Do we need to offer them incentives? You know, some... 10% off if you refer to a friend. How, how, how do you approach that? We do something like that. Right. We do a little a referral scheme. So if we do a job and you refer us, we get like a you know a big job out of it, we'll give some money to that client. And how, how do you operate that? Do you have a sort of formal percentage? Or, or what? We do a £50 um, sort of cash scheme, really. And how effective do you find that? Yeah, it's working well. It, it, it gives people a reason to remember you first yeah. rather than other companies they've had in the past. So, yeah, it seems to be working really well at the moment. In fact, actually, in a way, that's a voucher that people might keep on their table, yeah. which reminds them about you as well, isn't yeah, it? exactly. Because you can't help that. Sometimes you get sort of these um, supermarket vouchers through, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you keep them Sticking forever. The yeah. yeah, that's right. And then get ready to use them and realise the dates expire, yeah, exactly. as always. Um, what about with you, Jeff? I mean, how, how do you encourage referrals? Um, well, I have a Facebook page where um, customers can leave feedback and upload photos if they want to. Um, and uh, so then I can refer new clients to the testimonials that are on there mm. but I also offer a discount for a referral as well. 
Right. So clearly, discounts do help. Do you do, you do anything like that? Um, if I'm in, in a business, in a high-end market, that might seem a bit not tacky. Not quite. Well, it's not tacky. It depends on who you're dealing with. Sure. If I'm at a meeting, I used to be a member of the BNI group, mm-hmm. and I'm now a member of council. If I come to something like this, I might say to members here, if you want to use my services. As a first time offer, I will offer you 25% off or 15% off or whatever. But with my clients, I'll simply say if you know of anyone who, and they usually do, who needs my services, whether it's for me for an office, a business, or their lifestyle. Um, get them to get, talk with them, get them to contact me or you give me their details and I will contact. It helps if there's a conversation before you make that call rather than yeah. you just going, hi, I'm Ruth, I'm here to help you and yeah. save your life. It, that it doesn't work. Actually, it doesn't absolutely. work. And offering a discount, these people don't need a discount. So it's not about the discount. Yeah. I go back to it. It's about the peace of mind when someone trustworthy is taking over some of the tasks that you don't want to do. Or haven't got the time to do. The money is actually not the issue. I've got a lot of shopping. I really. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> if I can't do it, I'll find someone else who can. <laughs> Right, I need to get going. Um, I'm sure all of us need to get going. We have to get back to our business. I've actually got a sales meeting in, uh, ooh, not that long, actually. In fact, I better get a move on for that. Before that, though, here's my social media tip of the day. Remember why you're doing social media. Just like in business, it's not about turnover that matters, but about the cash flow. It's the same with social media. I'd rather have 10 followers who love my product than thousands of Facebook followers who never actually uh, use it or are going to use it. So it's all about return investment, just like in all business. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about on Facebook about getting thousands of followers, but unless you're actually using it, and this is something Jeff is doing, he's actually using those referrals to actually getting more business, um, then it's a complete waste of time. So really think about why you're doing it. Well, I hope you've got a lot out to today. Today's show has gone on rather longer than we planned, but as I say, it is still sort of test development phase of this whole uh, project. I hope you got a lot out of it. Let us know if you use any of the ideas in the show, or even if you have other suggestions, then just go to wakeuptobusiness.com and put your thoughts in the forum on there. If you have an event yourself or you want your event organizer to invite us, just go to the same place and click events and then how to invite us. If you want to come and have a chat with these lovely people as well, they are at Twickenham Business Biscotti in Twickenham in Middlesex, uh, second Friday of every month. Uh, Ruth, um, where do they find more details about you? Uh, my website is www svpaservices.com and just one last thing if you don't know if you need a VPA make a list of all the things that have been bugging you then decide who can help you do it I'm not sure there's enough paper in the world um, <laughs> Jay how do people get hold so, of you? www.themsflame.com very very simple and Jeff just Mr McDonut a, just do a search for Mr McDonut and you'll find me Yep, no question there. Um, great, okay, uh, if you've also got a few minutes more, then don't forget to look at some of the past shows. We actually talked to a, a member of the government, a cabinet minister in the last programme, Ed Davey, uh, to find out uh, whether they're really taking seriously small businesses. We know that when you've got a big company and you can afford public affairs teams, that's not a problem, but are they taking small businesses and medium-sized businesses seriously? You've been watching Wake Up To Business TV, sponsored by shoutpal.com, disrupting social media from Twickenham Business Biscotti. I'd like to thank all my guests, Jay, Jeff and Ruth. One final thought. There's some great business quotes out there, but I do like this one from Seth Godin. You are not your resume. You are your work. So may I wish you a highly successful and profitable business day. Over the past few minutes, you've been part of any business questions. Now carry on the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag, or one word, any business questions. Or join us on the community. Just go to Google Plus and type in any business questions. If you'd like us to come to your event too, have a look at the business TV section on the ShoutPow website. That's shoutpow.com, the business TV section. We all hope to see you at the next event.